Well, thank you, Jim, for the introduction. Uh, well, uh, it's good to be here, and uh, I'd like to thank you know my advisor, Jun, and also the other contributors list on the slide. And also, I'd like to acknowledge the funding support from NASA Graduate Fellowship. So yeah, this study is talking about the ground-based measurement in AirNet. And a little bit, a little bit of background. The AirNet, you know, during the last 20 years, uh, uh, it has right now has over 400 stations around the globe. And at each station, uh, the sun photometer is equipped and to measure the direct sun readings and the diffuse readings. Then they provide a very accurate AOD values. They also provide the retrieval of aerosol size distribution and the refractive indexes. And those products are valuable resources for the climate study and especially for validating the aerosol products from satellite and also the model simulation from a chemical transport model. They also have some perspective on the aerosol speciations. However, you know, as, as the uh, inversion products have been available over 10 years, uh, they start to face some challenges. And one of the challenges is, is accuracy. So if you see the table on the right, is the accuracy of those uh, aerosol parameters in the current inversion products. So basically, uh, the AOD is very accurate, and uh, the size distribution is about a 15 to 100 uncertainty based on, depending on the particle size. Uh, and the referred index uncertainty is 0 0.025 to 0 0.05. And if you compare those uncertainty with some, you know, a new generation set of sensor like the APS sensor, so you can find some some of those uncertainties even uh, larger than some satellite products. So another uh, challenge is the inconsistency of the uh, aerosol parameters, and in the inversion, they retrieve uh, aerosol size distribution in 22 different size bin. And they also assume the refractive index is independent of size. But in this aerosol products from satellite, they retrieve the fine mode and the coarse mode aerosol parameters. So one of the solutions to face those challenges is to you know, uh, add some more inform information to, to retrieval. So we propose to move to add the polarization measurements. And then in our inversion, we also define some uh, bimode aerosol prime properties here. So the objective of, st of this study is to quantify uh, how much information in the, uh, in the measurements of the polarization and how better the retrieval can, uh, can be achieved if we add those polarization measurements into the retrieval. And so specifically, uh, we wanted to answer the question is does the polar polarimetric inversion can enable the mode dependent characterization of the aerosol refractive index and the single square beetle. And for sure, we will develop a new research algorithm to retrieve those aerosol parameters. And finally, we'll demonstrate this inversion algorithm with some real case study. So on the left is what we get from the sun photometer. It may have direct readings, AOD. They may have the uh, sky radiances in the solar ion counter plan. And with the newer generation sun photometer, they also measure multispectral polarization data. And on the, on the left is uh, the parameters we want to retrieve. So basically, it's, it is the uh, uh, effect radius, effect variance, volume, and the refract indices, which are associated to uh, a bimode log normal distribution, which account for 22 parameters. So to build the retrieval algorithm, we need to develop the forward model. And we have been developing this forward model for the last two years, and which is, I'm sorry. It's called UNL VRTM, and we online couple the linearized me code and, and the linearized vector rate transfer model. So with that, we can direct calculate of the readings and the polarization from the aerosol parameters, and also calculate the Jacobian of those uh, measurements with respect to those parameters. Then we combine the, the, the maximum likelihood uh, inversion optimization 
and given uh, some a priori a constraint and a smoothness constraint of the retrieval. So we get the inversion of those parameters. And before we do the real case study, we do some information content analysis. Uh, here shows uh, two different scenarios. Uh, the first scenario is the degree of freedom for signal, or DFS, for the readings only retrievals. And the second scenario is uh, if we add a polarization, what the DFS will be. And this is contour plot is a function of AOD and the fine molar fraction. And also on top is Armstrong exponent. So you can see uh, after we add polarization, the increase of the degree of freedom for signal can range from 2 to 5. So that's about 20 to 30 percent increase of the information content for retrieval. And also, as we know uh, from the readings only measurements, we cannot resolve the uh, referring index for both fine and, and the coarse mode. So we want to see if we add a polarization, can we resolve them? So this column shows the, if we use uh, readings only inversion, the retrieval error in refraction index is function of AOD and uh, is function of fine molar fraction. So uh, you can see it's, it's not possible to retrieve, uh, to, sim to simultaneously retrieve the re refraction index over both fine and coarse mode because to, to retrieve the refraction index over fine mode, we need the large fine molar fraction and to retrieve that over coarse mode, we need smaller fine molar fraction. So it's impossible to simultaneously retrieve that over both modes. But with, with, with adding polarization, we can have those arrow, retrieval error decrease a lot. And it gave us the possibility to retrieve the referring index uh, over both fine and coarse mode. And we also identify the condition we can retrieve the uh, bi-mode refracting index and a single square beetle, which is AOD larger than 0 0.2 and the unstable exponent between 0.7 and 1.6. And then uh, when we do the real retrieval, so we apply many uh, practical considerations here. So for example, we apply various quality assurance check into, onto the measurements to remove the cloud contamination. And we also uh, apply some real observation of the gases to uh, calculate the gas absorptions. And we apply the real time, uh, not real time, it's a time matched uh, BRDF uh, products from MODIS to calculate the surface reflectance. And uh, so we also, do, because our study, because our tool was started with uh, first guess, and we also need a priori characterization, and we determine a priori based on long term historic measurements. So here's uh, uh, how do we get the a priori characterization. And we, because we are going to do some case study over Beijing Station, and uh, we collect three years of daily inversion products over this station. Uh, and we choose AOD larger than 0.2 to analyze the climatology of the size parameters. And we choose AOD larger than 0.4 to analyze the climatology of the refractor index. And you can see, uh, and this is the frequency of those uh, uh, measurements of those inversions as a function of the fine molar fraction. And you can see overall uh, the aerosol in Beijing uh, is uh, based on, in most cases, is mixed by the both fine and coarse mode. And also this figure shows the astronomic exponent as a function of the fine molar fraction. I can see uh, the stronger sensitivity of the Armstrong exponent at longer wavelengths, which is between a 17 nanometer and a 1020 nanometer. So we use this Armstrong exponent and uh, uh, to determine we, we want to retrieve bi mode or mono mode aerosols. And those four panels just uh, you know, give you the climatology we analyzed based on the, those three years of data. And we get the mean value and uh, the significant value of the effective radius, effective variance, and the real part of reference and the part of refract indexes. And, and then, so and the standard deviation here is kind of uh, the natural variability 
of those parameters. And we use those climb touch as our a power R here. And it's good to note, note there, you can see the real part of refer index here as function of the Feynman fraction is kind of very linear. So in, uh, in, this, in this place, you have, when you have a low value of the Feynman fraction, that means there's most uh, coarse modal aerosols. And uh, here is that dominated by the Feynman aerosols. So you can see, and uh, between them, it's the kind of a value uh, of their average. So we can see that the, the aerosol here, in a, during a well-mixed condition, they should have a separate fine and a coarse modal reference index values. And we applied uh, three cases here and over three different days and three different aerosol conditions. You can see from the image here and over Beijing station. And we applied two types of inversion. The first one is to do the readiness only inversion, and which is same as Aaron current use. And we also do a polarimetric inversion by adding the polarization measurements. And those figures shows the feeding of the measurements. And this, this panel shows the observed uh, normalized readings over four different wavelengths. And this figure shows the degree of linear polarization measurements over those four different wavelengths. And the bottom figure shows the residual error. So you can see the residual error of the readings uh, is generally look at within this 5% uncertainty. And, and our Inversion using polarization measurements, which is the solid line, uh, the, the, the feeding error of those uh, degree of linear polarization is, is also within its uncertainty, which is 0 0.01. But uh, if you don't consider uh, the polarization as a constraint, you can see uh, the degree of linear polarization simulated using those retrievals is deviated you know, from its measurements. So it highlights the importance of using polarization in a retrieval. And here summarizes some feeding residual errors. So you can see if you don't have the uh, polarization in the inversion, you will have generally higher feeding errors in the polarization. So the re retrieval results here shows the particle size distribution. Uh, the color of the red is the Radiance only inversion. The green one is uh, the polarimetric inversion. And the gray one is uh, the airnet operational inversion products. So you can see generally uh, over the three cases, uh, our retrieval uh, has a very consistent with uh, the airnet operational retrievals. And, but for the refracting index, and the dashed one line is for coarse mode, and, and the dotted line is for fine mode. So and we compare the total refer index with the internet, which is the solid lines here. And you can see, in terms of the uh, total refer index, we kind of feel consistent with the internet operating retrievals, but we do have a separate uh, coarse mode and a fine mode values for each of those modes. And this, uh, the, this also happens for the uh, effect, for the immediate part of the re refractor indices. And for the single square air below and the asymmetry factor, we also compare our retrieval with the internet. Uh, the, here, the dashed line is for coarse mode, and uh, the dotted line is for fine mode, and the solid line is for total. So you can see in total we have a consistent with the internet, but we do have separate fine coarse mode of those optical parameters too. So in conclusion, well, adding polarization into an immersion can increase the degree of freedom for signal by two to five, which is 20 to 30 percent of information increase. And uh, when the aerosol in this condition, which is AOD larger than 0.2, and the uh, unstorming is point between 0.7 and, and 1.6, we can do a bimodal reference index retrievals. And our retrieval are consistent with internet operational ones, means we're doing the right retrieval here, and, uh, but our retrieval yield model separate reference index and a final, final fraction, uh, I'm sorry, and a single square below. That's what I have, thank you.
Oh, time for one or two short questions. Yes, well, well, first, Oleg, you know, thank you for your comments, and I apologize for not including the limitation of our study. I fully agree with you about our discussion.